Welcome to our World of Fiery videos, covering topics of everyday importance to print providers. Today we will cover how to create an output profile. The first thing I want to talk to you about is that we're going to make a profile that does a couple things. It defines the gamut of the print system. As we know, we need to know the gamut to do our color management. And we're going to have some options here because you wouldn't be able to use your digital press if it didn't come with profiles. So you're automatically going to always have a plain profile and a coded profile and depending on the manufacturer of your rip, maybe more for different paper types. Those factory profiles, if you calibrate on the same paper they were created for, will give you a very good result. But if I want to get into that better range where I can compete better or I can talk about my tolerances or matching to some standard or some reference like a G7 kind of world or something like that, I'm going to have to make my own profiles. So best practice is to make my own profiles. The reasons are I want to print on my own paper. I want to change my print settings to use the resolution and halftone screen that I think look the best for my customers. And finally, I have a press different than the one at the manufacturer where they made that profile which means my press might have a little bit different mechanical characteristics, might be at a different place in its service cycle, and almost certainly it's going to be in a different environment at a different temperature and humidity than where the press was when they made the factory profile. So again, factory profile is good. Please calibrate just so you get predictable results, even if they're not perfect. But if you want to get the best results, this is where we talk about, and I'm going to show you a quick demonstration here of how we create an ICC profile. So the first thing is to understand about creating this profile, I need two sets of values. Remember in our little primer at the beginning of today, we talked about how a profile always has one set of device values and one set of device independent values. So for an output profile, it's pretty easy to guess that the device values are going to be CMYK. And I get these from a standard chart, such as you see here, this is an IT873, a 928 patch target that I can use to create a profile. I know the device values. I know what the CMYK values are for every one of those patches on this chart. The second set of values I'm going to need are device independent values. I'm going to need those LAV values or some device independent values from a spectrophotometer. Now I can make that index, that lookup table that we call an ICC profile that says for each combination of device colors, so just for instance for the patch that is 0% uh, cyan and magenta and 100% yellow and 0% black, I know what that looks like in LAB space. Now I can create a mapping so that when somebody comes into me with an LAB value and says, I need this LAB value, and I look it up and I say, well, that's my pure yellow, I'll know to print pure yellow for that pixel. I'm going to need some software to do this, obviously, since you're probably not going to craft your own ICC profile in Microsoft Excel. Color Profiler Suite is what we have here at EFI, and again, I'm trying to be non-denominational, but we're just going to use that at least for our demo. So let's show you a demonstration of how this works. It's really not as hard as it seems. There's some tricky parts as far as how to print the patches and how to set up your black generation, unless you have an old scanner operator hanging around your shop still. Other than that, it's really about how to measure the patches and load the profile. So I'm in Color Profiler Suite. I'm going to print the patches. Color Profiler Suite does connect directly to the digital front end of the RIP, so it sends the patches for me with the right calibration in place and so on and the right settings as far as the way I need to print the patches to make a profile. I'm reminded right there about calibration. And I tell the system how, I, how many patches I want to print and what device I want to use to measure them. So we're using that same patch target I, told, I showed you earlier, but formatted for this X-ray device. And because I'm connected directly to the print system, I'm showing my job properties here so I can pick my tray and my resolution and halftone screen and all that that I've done my calibration for. And then we're going to measure this on this I.O. table. So I put the patch page in. I need to show the system the corners of the patch page to set it up. And then basically it's Kind of like watching a machine in Detroit making a car, only not nearly as fast. <laughs> so 
So here's my measurements. I'm going to save these. The color profiler suite is going to give me a little information about what I measure. I'm going to go to my expert settings. We have a benefit here. We can cheat on the fiery. We can pick the profile that's already on the rip for a similar type of paper and we get all those factory default settings. So we don't need a scanner operator to do this. We have one that figures these things out internally. And finally, I need to load that thing, and it's, remember, we're already hooked to the rip, so it's just going to go right on the rip. The last step, I'm going to play a little Julia Child here on you and not make you watch the entire process of generating profile, which does take several minutes to make all these tables that are in the profile. Finally, when I'm done, I'm going to go back to my color settings, and I'm going to pick that profile. And that's what you see right here. I've created a new output profile, and I'm going to pick it. It's linked to the calibration set that I made for that paper, and now I'm ready to get really, really consistent and high quality color. So if we go back to our where are we now diagram, we went from being un uncalibrated to calibrated. So we got very consistent, but not very accurate. Now we're in the upper right corner that we've profiled. Not only are we consistent, but we're consistently hitting a standard. And again, your standard is probably something like Swap or Grackle or maybe Fogra, depending on where you're listening from today. But these are typically the industry references that we try to match our presses to so that we know they're consistent from device to device and so that we can win those really picky customers that require these kinds of things. Thank you for watching. For additional resources and e-learning classes on this topic, visit our website. To see all recorded sessions and register for upcoming World of Fiery webinars, please visit efi.com forward slash WOF webinars.